Okay, do you know any cancer patients? What about Alzheimer's? Or even anybody with diabetes? If I told you there were research out there to help these people, would you support it? My name is Alex Wesley and I'm here to talk to you about stem cell therapy. So my thesis for this presentation is that embryonic stem cells are not human beings and they should be used to research and treat physical ailments. So what are these stem cells? According to the National Institute of Health, there are two types. There are adult stem cells and embryonic stem cells. This presentation is going to focus more on embryonic stem cell research, but I'm going to explain both. Adult stem cells are differentiated, meaning that they have a specific function. So a muscle stem cell is going to be to move your arms or legs, or a neuron stem cell is going to be to relay brain messages back and forth. Uh, they're, like I said, they're differentiated, they have a specific fu function, but the stem cell is what all the other stem cells come for, so they proliferate into the neighboring cells. Embryonic stem cells, on the other hand, are a blueprint for the human body. They do not differentiate within the first three to five days after conception, and they can proliferate for up to a year in the lab. These stem cells, if transplanted, can then take on the shape of the neighboring stem cells and proliferate as that type. This is not a new technology, also according to the National Institutes of Health. Research began in the late 19th century for these. And then in the early 1970s, scientists took embryonic stem cells from a mouse and transplanted them into a rat's eye, curing the rat's blindness. That's how undifferentiated they are, that they can even be transferred between species, that although are similar, it cured the rat's blindness, and there was no rejection or anything like that. And then since 2010, they've been using stem cells to treat cancer patients. They've been transplanting bone marrow cells in order to use higher doses of chemo radiation. So this is an ethics presentation. I'm going to be talking about some ethical theories. According to marrow, or there's two types that I'm going to focus on, utilitarianism and natural law theory. According to Merriam-Webster, utilitarianism is creating the most good and the least amount of bad. So anything to cause pleasure over pain, and it's okay to cause some pain to get the most amount of pleasure. I have this uh, picture up here. This is to demonstrate uh, an ethical scenario with utilitarianism. There is a trolley on a track and a person in a switch. There is one person on the top and five people on the bottom. The utilitarianism would switch the train track so the trolley would run over the one person instead of five. He would cause some harm by running over the one person, but ultimately do the best good by saving the five people. Natural law theory is the other ethical theory I want to talk about. And Merriam-Webster says that that is specific principle to be derived from nature. Uh, it relates a lot to having inherent functions that everything is created with. Uh, there's a lot saying that structure is related to functions such as our hand is, the structure of our hand is made to pick stuff up. So what are some possible benefits of the stem cell therapy? According to Jun Ying and James, there is drug testing they can grow enough of a tissue with these stem cells by letting it reproduce in a laboratory that they are able to maybe grow a muscle or a neuron tissue, like I was saying earlier, and then test drugs on them. They can actually infect them with bacteria and make sure that drugs are not doing too much damage to the cells and that it's treating it the way that it should be. So, And that would also be useful in things like how much of this can we get before it overdoses or that sort of thing. Uh, they're able to understand and prevent birth defects with this. So they're able to take these embryonic stem cells and introduce certain growth factors or scenarios that might cause a birth defect and then understand how that would affect the growing embryo and move on to possible treatments of embryos that have been affected with that through medication testing like I just mentioned. In a presentation a couple weeks before this one, we talked about engineering tissues they're able to take a 3D printer and make a mold and then introduce these stem cells to the mold. It will then take the same shape and a couple years ago they actually grew somebody a windpipe out of the
the, their own stem cells and then did an autologous transplantation back into them, which the body took up and they now have a genetically engineered tracheal. Uh, and then also these can replace damaged tissues, just like I said about the autologous transplantations. You can donate your own stem cells and then replace them. Uh, if you were to get a bad burn or something and need a skin graft, you could take embryonic or you could take stem cells out of yourself and replace them in the skin or use these embryonic stem cells which would differentiate into the neighboring skin cells to grow you more skin and help you heal faster. So the legal landscape over the past few years has been a little bit complicated with this. During Bush's presidency, <clears throat> he vetoed twice in 05 and 07 despite Congress's bill. Uh, this is because of his pro-life theories. This is according to the National Institute of Health also. <coughs> in 09, Obama issued an executive order allowing stem cell therapy. Now this was only for stem cells that were created outside of the womb through in vitro fertilization. Uh, currently, several states restrict fetal experimentation according to the National Conference of State Legends. Sleatures. In Ohio specifically, uh, fetal experimentation is illegal and the sale of bodies, is, dead bodies, is illegal because of the Nuremberg Code. I'm going to talk a little bit about this later. I personally do not think that these embryonic cells are humans. Um, and then in 2017, which is very, this year, uh, Texas passed a law saying that they were going to allow stem cell therapy despite the CDA or the FDA's wishes, which is kind of interesting because they're going behind their back because there's enough research to say that these should be used. There's that many benefits. And that is according to CERVIC. So back to what I was saying about the fetal experimentation or the sale of bodies. I'm taking a weak continuity stance on this and saying that a blastocyte is not a human. This is a picture of a blastocyte, and this is what the embryonic stem cells will be harvested from. This is in, created after the first three to five days of conception, and that, that is what it looks like. Uh, a quote from Warren, who is a weak continuity theorist. He talks a lot about the ethical issues. He has a small quote I have listed up here, but in layman's terms, what that says is that we don't recognize a spermicide or as an, an ovum as a person, so why should we recognize this as a person? This is because, <coughs> excuse me, this is because um, they don't, they're unable to exist outside of the womb. A spermicide or an ovum is not able to exist in itself, and this is unable to exist outside the womb. It cannot create a person unless it is inside of a human in the womb, so it should be not, it should not be recognized as one. Uh, there are a couple criticisms of this theory, and it is mostly pro-life theorists. Why I'm talking about this, I want to bring up Nancy Reagan. According to the National Institutes of Health, she is a pro-life theorist, but she thinks that this should be allowed to be researched because her husband, Ronald Reagan, has Alzheimer's disease, and there's a lot of promising research saying that these stem cells could cure that, so she's all for that. <coughs> I'm sorry, excuse me. Uh, so, according to Lowe Parham, Low and Parham, they say that these embryos deserve special treatment uh, is because they're a potential human. Taking that stance, I disagree with because if these were a human or a potential human, it would make the mother and father the durable power of attorney. And in that scenario, they would be allowed to donate its body anyways if it were to die to science because that is something durable power of attorney is allowed to do. And so if they wanted to donate this to research, they would be allowed. So I don't understand where this point is coming from because if the parents consented for this to be used for research, resource or organ transplantation, which would kind of be the embryonic stem cell therapy, 
Um, there is nothing that says that can't happen with an actual human. And then Roe v. Wade in, the 19, in 1973 legalized abortion. So even if these were humans and deserve some sort of respect, they could be aborted. And uh, there are a lot of these embryonic stem cells anyways left over from in vitro fertilization, and they just get rid of them if they aren't used. So I don't understand why they wouldn't use them for possible benefits because they're just discarded and they don't become humans. So they aren't really potential people. All right, so to wrap things up, I want to bring back the utilitarianism and natural law theories. Uh, utilitarianism is important because even if these are potential humans and you might cause some bad by researching them or infecting them with specific diseases, ultimately they could cause the most good because you could cure things like Alzheimer's, diabetes, there's benefits for cancer, Parkinson's disease, there's all kinds of benefits for the research of them. So you might hurt some things, but overall you're kind of the most good. And then for natural law, these embryonic stem cells are meant to proliferate and grow. So by growing them, that is what they're meant to do, and that's going to contribute to the research. Uh, I believe that a blastocyte is not a human. Within the first three to five days of conception, it is not a human being. It's just not something that's going to become because it cannot survive outside of the mother's womb. And research and implementation of these cells should occur because there is a ton of possible benefits, as I listed earlier. Here are all the sources I use for this presentation, and that's it. Any questions?